This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hey, Chris. Hey, everyone. How are you all going? Uh, well, I believe I'm doing great, and you're doing good, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. It's, so it, it, All things are green. Yeah. So we're doing something a little <laughs> uh, different here today. We're going to be uh, doing a Let's Play. We don't often do Let's Plays. Uh, no, we don't. No. Uh, for those of you that don't know who the Blockade Pinball Podcast is, well, we are a podcast about all things pinball. Specifically, digital pinball. That would be our main and primary focus. Uh, and specifically, commercial digital pinball. There so you go. it's even more specific <laughs> <laughs> and uh today we're gonna be uh we're gonna be messing around with a uh rollers of the realm reunion that's the sequel to rollers of the realm uh and we've got some uh, guests joining us from uh developer phantom compass uh first off it would be tony hello Good to see you guys. Uh, you too. Uh, we've seen you uh, when you first started announcing this, and uh, we were able to have a little bit of a playthrough, but now we actually get to show it off, which is exciting. Yep, mm. looking forward to it. Uh, also joining us, uh, uh, part of the uh, Phantom Compass crew producer, Erica. Hey, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to my messy office. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's okay, because uh, for the most part, your office is going to be highlighted in a little tiny <laughs> box. Uh, so <laughs> um, we're going to actually just uh, go right into the game screen here, folks, so that we can see what's what. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of the let's playing. I'm going to do most of the playing. Jared's going to do most of the uh, questioning here. Uh, but let's just jump right in with a, uh, a brand new game here and uh, see what magic unfolds. Mm. Once upon a time. Ancient evil was awoken in the realm. Three terrifying elemental warriors and their undead host took to the battlefield to lay waste to the realm's woefully unprepared army. When all was but lost, a young squire took up the sword of his fallen knight, and in the shining light of his goodness and bravery, the three warriors and their minions were vanquished. The people rejoiced and rebuilt the realm under the steady hand of that noble squire, their new king, and they lived happily ever after. An epic tale to be sure, but not the truth. Not by a long shot. The true story was that the realm was saved by a common band of misfits. A mystic healer with no ties to the kingdom. A lost knight who spent years searching for meaning at the bottom of a bottle. An eccentric mage with dubious theories. All rallied by a young rogue with sticky fingers and a compass for trouble. But who in the realm would believe such a thing? And thus, a petrified squire, spared by chance and fortune by birthright, found himself in the wrong place at precisely the right time to become the king. But that is not where the story ends. For one story's ending is just another's beginning. So is it a bunch of fun coming up with your own stories from scratch? <laughs> <laughs> always, always, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love this world. This world that we created. It's, it's a, it's a fun one. It's different. <laughs> the thing I really like about that too is that it reminds you of what happened in the last game because it's been, it's been a little while since um, Rolls of the Realm, the first one, actually mm -hmm. came. It's been more like what's it, nearly eight years now, or maybe yeah, seven more. or eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's been a long, a long way. What's the, um, uh, I guess I'm, I'm curious, why such a long time between sequels? Uh, oof. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> as a small studio, you know, we're always picking uh, new and interesting projects to do. And uh, there's some um, funding mechanisms that we have here in Canada. We're mm. super lucky to have those. And um, sometimes, at one point in time, it was actually difficult to get a sequel funded, although we did want to make one. Uh, we had to wait a while until uh, the, the gears of government uh, turned our way and uh, and got that project underway. It's been maybe two years now in development. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yeah, right. That does make sense. Look at that. Yeah. I already missed some points because I didn't hit the vases. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that disturbs me. <laughs> I'm very gotta much a completionist player. Yeah, I like to catch yeah, them all. Unfortunately, catch all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in, in the in the, the the final version of the game, uh, you'll be able to go back and replay this level and ah. get all the goodies you missed. <laughs> yeah, there'll be like a how... campaign playthrough and then uh, replay playthroughs available ah, okay. as well. 
Oh, that's good. Because that was in the first game as well, wasn't it? You, you could actually go back through and, and compete for like, trying to get all the unlocks uh, in that's the right. area. Yeah. And there certainly is uh, an opportunity for, like, there's more depth, it seems like, in this game compared to the first one. You've got a lot more reason to go back through. Like, there's secret areas you need to find. You've got to collect all the sausages for, for, <laughs> for the dog, which I've been finding throughout the way, and they're very well hidden, so... It's definitely a lot of fun going back through and sort of trying to get to those secret areas. Yeah, I think we have more opportunities for each of the um, five characters in the game to sort of strut their stuff uh, in different places. Uh, so there's certain locked areas that are locked to certain kinds of heroes. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, we do have a quest system, system which is um, new to the game. Um, and uh, there's um, the mage's books, uh, there's uh, sausages to collect for the rogue's dog, uh, and just on Friday we were talking about a sheep shearing um, or sheep wool uh, quest. So those are still in progress, and um, as are a lot of the things on the world map um, that we'll probably see after this uh, playthrough, uh, is, uh, this play field is done. Yeah, and I think, uh, we, you know, mashing up pinball and rpg it was it was kind of a, a weird concept to begin with but you know while working on a sequel we were able to kind of um really focus in and hone those kind of uh juicy bits that people loved and kind of <laughs> get rid of uh some of the stuff that was a little bit more uh too sprawling um so i really i think that this this one's got some some new kind of fun fun things uh while kind of keeping that core I gotta say, even though the play field, like, at first glance there doesn't look like a lot to do, it's things like this, with the rats running around, or the uh, characters moving as the ball hits, that makes it interesting, because then it keeps your aiming uh, interesting, like you're not always going after the exact same shot. Yeah, and so maybe, you know, standard digital pinball um, has more stationary targets, um, possibly almost exclusively stationary targets, you know, to mimic traditional pinball. Um, but what we can do uh, with a kind of RPG pinball combo is have moving enemies on the screen and NPCs on the screen. Um, we even stray a little bit from actual pinball um, in the sense of having some parkour opportunities like uh, you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I like this sort of gameplay. You get to sort of, you know, it actually, I think, conveys the story more than you can probably achieve in um, more of a traditional pinball sense because you're actually, as a player, you're interacting with the story way more and engaging with it way more in this particular mode. Yeah, we did a lot of uh, fun stuff with the camera too, just the ability to move it around more of the 3D space. Um, we did um, flesh out the pinball environments so they take advantage more of, um, you know, verticality and horizontal gameplay. Uh, we'll, we'll have some side scrolling stuff coming up uh, as well. So, yeah, I think you're kind of put more into the space um, to explore. What I really like with that particular scene that we just saw Chris playing through there is you actually get like the, the bokeh effect that you actually put into the game. So you actually have depth of field. It actually gives you that really good feeling of, hey, like, it's a long way away where I'm shooting for over there. Yeah, we learned really how to nice do part. a few things in, in Unity after seven years. So. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the no, original like Rollers game was, was one of our first Unity projects and uh, actually in, you know, integrated our indie team uh, with the AAA team uh, from Silicon Knights in the St. Catharines, Canada area. And uh, that basically allowed us to um, kind of increase our studio's capabilities and, and work with some folks who take, you know, years to make a game. And we were used to taking months uh, and uh, to make a game. So it was a good meshing of, uh, of teams there. That's good. Now, I noticed that what Chris was doing there when you launched the ball into play, that's a bit different than um, what it was like in um, Rollers. The, the first Rollers had more of a, I guess, a traditional way of launching the ball into play with the plunger, but this is launched between the flippers with some very sort of um, magical looking, I'd like to say, sort of reticle that you shoot with. So why did you decide to change the way the ball is launched into play in this particular version of Rollers? 
I think ease of gameplay uh, and the ability of the player to have more agency, I think, was really a mandate for us um, mm -hmm. to try to give the player a lot more um, meaningful options. Because as we all know, like traditional pinball is very luck based. I mean, hey, I know you guys are super skilled and there's no luck involved, <laughs> but a lot of players are, uh, are, are not so good. So uh, mm -hmm. having that ability to make your first shot a called shot uh, makes up for um, some of the things that are actually more difficult in this game than traditional pinball. Like the fact that in combat your flippers uh, get worn down into tiny pieces. Into yeah. nubs. That was... <laughs> no, that's right, yes. They've, they've definitely got very, very tiny for me at one point, and I was going, wow. I'm too... you, when it gets to that point, you just go, I, I can't flip at all. Like, there's you gotta get your healer in. Yeah. So you look yeah, at yeah. right. I found a secret hidden sausage there. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think uh, you know the advantage of uh, this being a sequel too is when, when we when we first made the original uh, Rulers of the Realm, uh, we really weren't one hundred percent sure who our audience was. Uh, we weren't sure if you know who was going to love this game. Is it was it just people who liked indie games, or was it people who liked pinball, or was it people who liked RPGs, or somewhere in between? And uh, you know what one thing that we discovered is that like like there was uh like a digital pinball audience that appreciated the pinball aesthetics but um there are a lo also a lot of uh, more casual players who who loved the world and the story and the characters so we didn't want to alienate those players um with uh, the the you know high skill level required to, uh, for pinball um to be really good at it uh so we've yeah, we've added uh, things like that you know a cold shot off uh, off the beginning and then there's also things like dash that you've already seen um that kind of allow to, the player to have a little bit more agency than you would in traditional pinball and i'll just point out so people notice i'm able to switch the ball on the fly in the middle of a level and that's yep. new as well right because you had to actually wait for ball launch last time in uh some, yeah there was an world. area next to the flipper where you could cradle the ball and um, that was typically ah. the only place that you could swap uh heroes right. and once again we really wanted to give people immediate oh feedback and immediate options so that in a lot of cases you can kind of use the unique abilities of each hero um in a kind of tag team fashion mm -hmm. and um you know i guess for anybody who's not that familiar with this game you know as a pinball rpg it's hero driven so story driven um the heroes have a unique dash uh, which chris is doing right now yep. and unique abilities and it really follows the tropes of dungeons and dragons so if you have you know your knight character you're going to smash things more easily uh the rogue is nimble quick and agile um and in this play field uh two new characters will join that uh once again feed right into that kind of classic D, &D party uh feel so our mage. I love her. She's very sassy. <laughs> she, yeah. <laughs> She's old enough. She doesn't. She doesn't suffer. Suffer. She doesn't care. Baloney. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. That's great. Yeah, she's got a couple of uh, spell-based abilities that are fun to play like, with. If I go lightning, oh yeah, let's zap everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can zap multiple enemies that way, and her dash has a little extra hot sauce added to it. <laughs> as well yeah what i like is that you could really um there's lots of opportunities to actually um to collect mana in the game that allows you to power up the characters it's readily available you can shoot anything with the stars on it basically and you're collecting mana and it just flows really nicely in the game yeah that's great. great i mean that's what we wanted to do is to not be stingy with character special abilities which i think was you know, one thing that we wished we had been a little more generous with in the first game, this, the second game gives you tons of opportunities to exercise each hero's uh, unique powers. Which I'd imagine is probably because you actually give players more access to the special abilities, it actually forms probably more of a keystone for the game and yeah. how you actually progress. I, it really is a game that you're meant to play more actively in a lot of ways than just flipping the ball up and down. Um, you know, you mm. are going to have those opportunities to... The dash is, like, very powerful, not just in what it does in the game, but gives you the ability to go anywhere on the board that you want to, provided you can aim. Um, yeah, right. And this is the first uh, world map, uh, interactive world map that we've had uh, so far as well, so... The first game was sort of a 2D 
interface and this one um maybe after we're done this play field we can nose around the, the game world a bit and sure. see what's what this play field is something that i really enjoy and this is the introduction of like a different gameplay style in the game than we're used to in the the previous rollers and you have this almost like uh it reminds me very much of um bonsai run um <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. that, that sort of you know vertical really hard sort of play field that you get and we're, we're seeing this different gameplay style now that, that chris is um exploring oh, um, i realized i have the wrong ball to do that with yeah that's <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right but the whole idea behind this is it's just another way of playing pinball and another gameplay style it was the what was the intent of actually spicing it up a little bit with with different Ooh, gameplay styles. breaking up some of the pinball play with different gameplay modes um was kind of something that we wanted to do like when you're telling a story i guess you really if you're focusing all you know the whole thing's all combat all combat all combat it gets a little boring you need to kind of break things up a bit as a breather um in this case we have just enough pinball to kind of get you around um, what you need to do here you're meant to collect books you can actually do that in two different ways. So one is by bumping the librarians um, who shush you often. They're very uh, grumpy. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you're in their library. so. Mm. And then, you know, rolling around these shelves. And of course, the little dash of, of secrets and, and fun exploration aspects too. I'll tell you what, Chris, you're way the... better. You're way better <laughs> at me than this, at this level than I am. I, I, str I got all the books. I ended up getting all the books in this level, but it was, it was not nearly as elegant as Chris is demonstrating here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, the great part is like you can pick on the librarians ex almost exclusively if you want to try to sort of farm the um, the collectibles that way. But um, yeah, so we have a bunch of different side scrolling um, options in the game, and uh, and even some top down marble rolling as well, which is uh, another kind of gameplay break. And so obviously, I didn't mm -hmm. break into those walls where there was uh, special hidden goodies, but there's where you're saying you get to go back later and uh, kind of hunt all that stuff down. Yeah. I'd imagine you need the knight to get into those areas because he's a bit yeah. heavier. He can break through the walls. The knight yeah. will do it the fastest for sure. Mm. Yeah, we we try to provide uh, you know a variety and a, a good balance of with the different uh, character balls so that you're never stuck. You know, um, if you if you don't have the right. Uh, uh, party member in your roster uh, but there are definitely uh the you know the, the characters are balanced so that they each have kind of like i'm gonna uh, widen out the map there so we can see a little bit yeah go wide go. view so i'm guessing that these uh you know we've got fog in various places is that areas we're going to be able to explore as we go on or is this the entire map this is probably the entire map okay. for the I don't want to give away too much. Okay. This, let's say this is the entire this map. This is the realm. That more, yeah, this is the realm. <laughs> and there may be some additional areas. Um, again, not not to spoil it too much. Okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Is there any area you want me to explore right now, or do you want me to go back up to the treasury? Uh, one thing you might consider doing is taking a look at the party menu. So that just basically mm. unlocked for you. And okay. this is the way where you can sort of at a glance, see who your party roster, um, has in it and you can add and take away any party members just by toggling on or off. Um, and the combination of hero characters, um, affects your party stats. And those are things like, uh, like a loot magnet things, you know, will, will uh, ob collectible objects will gravitate towards you. Um, also the very important party hearts. Mm -hmm. So, um, the number of hearts that your party has basically represents your lives in pinball. And so, uh, you can upgrade your characters as you go through and depending on who the characters are in your roster, all of their hearts add up to the amount of lives that you have. And this is the um, uh, upgrade system right here, I assume, in the hero. Yeah, section. that's right. And you can switch hero, um, heroes using the the up arrow on your controller um, to see what the different upgrade availability is, um, and it'll basically give you. Um, I think it ends up being quite a lot more options than the first game's um, item system, um, but we've simplified the character uh, statistics so that they're more consistent across the board with the five heroes. Um, the fifth, by the way, is that question mark on the end, <laughs> because there's a bunch in this game that we, you will discover if you play the full game, um, but not in this playthrough. But, uh, anyway, um, so this is still a work in progress, by the way, for anybody who's, uh, who's not aware, we're, um, still polishing and adding content. Is it, uh, is it too cheeky of me to ask sort of 
about how far through you are. No. Like, what what sort of? I mean, I mean we're here. way over halfway through the game right. um, in terms of production. But you know, there's always stuff that you want to polish, and then there are things that you know. It's like we have a, a nice to have list, a must have list. You know, this is Eric and I <laughs> constantly combing over all the things we want to do. You know, on a weekly basis, and talking to different team members to see what else we can squeeze in. Um, so there are still right. things in this realm environment um, that we haven't added yet that we need to be adding, uh, like random encounters. Um, there are um, some sheep on the map um, that will uh, probably be involved in a quest. And we have, we're going to have more little interactive things on the world map that you can kind of bump into and explore. Actually, there are mysterious holes on the map as well. If you can find them um, after you're finished this play field, uh, you can take a quick clue and see what that's all about. This is a whole nother gameplay mechanic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, platformer style, like right. classic platformer style in the yeah. game. Fortunately, it's fairly forgiving. Like, you don't have to hit precisely on the middle of the trampoline in order to get there, except for here I go dumping down. <laughs> <laughs> Try again, Chris. Try again. But see, at least it's not punishing me for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you don't die or anything. You just yeah. have to restart. We do have more good. hazardous uh, types of play fields that are not this being you know maybe the third level in or whatever we didn't want to be too harsh yeah right <laughs> introducing but later on you watch yeah. your hearts mister <laughs> all right oh dear so yeah get, perfect perfect your ability to actually use the platforms early on i guess yeah. that's the whole idea isn't it it's it's rolling out Game, new gameplay aspects in the game so players don't feel overwhelmed by the mechanic that must be a really fine balancing act when you're actually making a game like this working out what the right level of um rollout is for for the sort of gameplay mechanics yeah and it's it's that's actually why it's uh very important that we get uh, people playing the game while we're while it's still in production you know um we used to we used to bring uh our games are fairly early on to shows like you know like like packs <laughs> with live live people actually playing and we'd be able to watch them play and uh and see uh what they're experience how they're experiencing the game and how they're experiencing that flow and um so that's something that we've been really missing um through that the this production cycle uh primarily happening in the pandemic so um we're really excited to get uh get more feedback on uh on the game are you seeing more opportunities now that you know we're sort of out of the worst part of the yeah. pandemic <laughs> now to, for for more player feedback like this or is it still a little bit sort of i guess touch and go uh, we're oh. trying to get player feedback it's it, it, there's a lot of uh, a lot more tools like it particularly with with uh, uh you know uh events like this and you know steam provides um great tools now for uh like you know playing your demo um betas those kinds of things are are very um uh well integrated now um so the, we're, we're very happy you know to have have those tools that are even if we can't travel <laughs> you know we have those tools at our fingertips now and uh, are ready to engage i was gonna ask the uh probably the, the question that most studios get asked and uh, how did COVID affect what you were doing here with this particular game? Did it add challenges or was it sort of like, no, just business as usual, just online, everything virtual? Yeah, well, we, we we were actually uh, we were online uh, studio before before the pandemic, so it was not as challenging as it was for some studios who had to make that transition. But uh, you know, I, the the mental um, uh, tax that uh, everybody had on and having you know the, Tony and I and our other studio partner and other uh, people have have children uh, who mm. were at home invading our offices, oh, <laughs> our <yes>. offices <laughs> and uh, eating oh. up gobbling up bandwidth um, so you know those yep. were those were other challenges you know that um, you know were are hard to um, 
you know, exactly uh, quantify, you know, what the impact was, but we all, we all felt, uh, felt it and it definitely um, slowed things down for us, you know, but, it, uh, you know, slowing, slowing production down sometimes isn't a bad thing, right? Uh, mm. it, it gives you more time, you know, if to, to think and, uh, you know, make better the reflection, decisions. The ability to reflect on past work and let things simmer a bit is, uh, you know, uh, definitely helpful for us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just realize that we're probably about five minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna see how from... fast I can bash through this uh, little uh, <laughs> business here. Let me uh, get my heavy hitter in here. There we go. Speed run. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Speed run. This is this is uh, our first um, uh, kind of like big boss level. Can I ask what, what this is, is when it goes spiky? Yeah. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> it's basically a damage power up, and um, uh -huh. you might notice uh, that the little damage numbers that float up um, when you hit people, uh, it's basically double that usual oh, okay. number. Ah, oh, okay, um, right. Because mm -hmm. I was like frantically uh, trying to hit buttons to figure out what it was doing. <laughs> like, oh, right, it's right. not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, d we definitely learned um, from rounds of feedback that we've gotten, especially in the last six months, um, the tutorial um, that you would played through earlier uh, was way more involved and way more verbose and there was many more interruptions in gameplay and mm. so mm. we smoothed and smoothed and smoothed and smoothed that out uh, so that there are more things left to discovery so we tried really hard not to over explain things. And this is yeah. basically getting us to the end of uh, what our intro uh, video showed us, because it's our the other character that was in that intro, I believe. Yeah, yep, you right. get to meet the the king, who is the former squire, who found himself in a uh, a position of regality, <laughs> was perhaps slightly unjustified. <laughs> but anyway, th I just want to make it clear, though, for folks um, who are not familiar with this series, you do not have to have played the first game to enjoy the second game. It's uh, totally standalone. Yeah. It is, although, in saying that, definitely get the first game. I'm saying yeah. it as a, as a because it is it's actually fun. a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And while there, while there's definitely improvements in what we're seeing here, it's still it's really fun game to play the first oh, thanks. game. So, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the final version of this. I'm just wondering, though, if, if folks want to engage with you more um, about this and they like what they see here, are there ways that um, the community can get involved? Um, with Fan and Compass at all. Erica, you want to take that one? Sure, yeah, no, there's uh, definitely, um, like our, we, we do have a Discord that you can find on our, our uh, link on our Twitter or, uh, you know, join us. You go us to our website, our... we link our Discord from there as well. And um, we have a demo available uh, on Steam to play and try. And there's links to give feedback uh, in that demo as well. That'll That's be great, great for uh, more players to be able to uh, sample and uh, get a sense of uh, helping you guys out further development uh, as it works comes along. Yeah, yeah. We, we'd love to hear what people think. It's uh, super important to us. I'd definitely be in favor of seeing. Yeah, go and get him. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you know what I'd love to see? Yeah, dash at him. Dash at him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you got him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you guys for taking the time to play, and uh, thanks to PAX for having us on. And much appreciated. Yeah, it's been great to catch up with you both again. Thanks again for your time today, and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing more as uh, time goes on. It's awesome. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Cheers. All right. Bye bye, guys. Thank you so much. See you later. And uh, that's our time with uh, you guys here today. Thank you for uh, tuning in again. Uh, we are Blockade Podcast. You can find us on the Twitters and on the, uh, the old YouTube where we talk plenty about uh, Digital Pinball. And I'm sure we'll be talking more about uh, Rollers of the Realm Reunion as uh, time goes on. So, till next time, sure. thank you and bye-bye. Uh, See you later.